Hey, this is John. Welcome back to Modern Old School Developer. In this video, we're going to start working on the Movie Manager application state. So there's a lot of things we need to keep track of so that we can respond to user input. The list of movies, list of actors, the categories, and all the various form component selections. So let's get started on making that work. So we're going to start out by using the built-in use context and use reducer hooks from React. And I'm doing that to show you why I ended up going with Redux Toolkit later on. But I want to show you, and I want to highlight some of the differences between those two things because on the surface, use reducer and use context can seem very similar to Redux. And they are conceptually, but with Redux Toolkit, Redux is a lot more feature filled and a lot better to use overall. So we'll be using that later on. But for now, we're going to stick to the basics that are in React. So let's go ahead and make a new file in here. I'm going to call it state context.tsx. This is going to be our context provider that provides our state to the application. So we're going to start by importing create context. This will be from React. Then we're going to go ahead and export default create context and we need to set up the types for this, so it's going to be an object that we're exporting. And we're going to have a state, which is our application state. So I don't have a type for this yet, but we're going to call that undefined until I get a type for that. And then we're going to have the dispatch, which is our dispatch hook. And that's going to be a react.dispatch. And that's going to be, again, undefined until I know what the type is. So there is our object type, what we're going to actually provide to the application. And we need to define what those things are. And again, the state right now is undefined. And the dispatch is going to be a function which returns undefined. And those are objects. They should be commas, not semicolons. OK, so that's a good start. So let's go ahead and create our initial state. All right, now that we've made our context, which will provide our state and our dispatcher to our application, we need to actually make the state. That's going to be our reducer. So let's have something like we need our reducer function. So I'll make a reducer.typescript function. And we need to have our default state be in here. So we're going to have const initial state equals an object. We have a list of movies, so we'll put that as a list. We will have a list of actors, a list of categories. We need to know which movie is selected, so selected movie, and by default there won't be a movie selection. Which actors are selected, selected actors, again won't be any by default, selected Categories Again, that will be null by default. What else is there going to be? There's that movie form data. So there is the movie name, which by default will be null. There's going to be the movie series. These are going to be numeric identifiers. I think I'll put, make them be um, ID. So let me make that like the movie. It's like the movie ID. And then movie studio ID, which will be null. And then movie series number, which again, by default, won't be a selection for that. So I believe that is all of our state. We're going to need to type these things as well. So in this types folder, let's have a state type. Or maybe just a state type. State.ts. Let's go with that for now. So I want to export... Uh, interface state type. This is going to be the type of state we have in our application. So let's go ahead over to our reducer and split that so I can see them both at the same time. So we're going to have movies. Um, it will probably be more complicated later, but for now, let's just say it is a list of strings. Same thing for actors. And same thing for categories. 
selected movie ID. This is going to be either a number or a no if there is no selection. Selected actors is going to be either a string array or no if there aren't any. And selected categories will be a string array or no if there aren't any selections. Movie name will be a string or it will be no. Movie studio ID will be a number or no. Movie series ID will be number or no. And movie series number is going to be a number or no. Okay, that's good for now. So let's go say this state is of type state type. All right, there we go. So we've got that. So now we need to make our reducer function, I think. So in our reducer, we're going to export default. This is going to be an arrow function. Uh, it's going to take a state, which is a state type. And it's going to take an action, which is an action type. We haven't defined that yet, but we will in a minute. And like I said, it's an arrow function. So right here, this is where we define what actually happens. This is our this is this is what gets called when we dispatch an action to our use reducer hook. So what we want to do is we want to switch on the action. But let's go define the action type real quick. Let's put the state over here. Okay, so the action type is the union of all the possible actions. So an individual action consists of potentially a payload, but definitely a type that tells it what to do. So let's start off by defining those individual action type properties. And we'll do that with an enumeration. So we're going to export enum actions. And one action we might want to take care of is setting the selected movie ID. So let's say set selected movie ID is our first action. And now we have an individual action type property. We also need a payload for that. So let's go ahead and define the actual action, the individual action, which is going to be an interface. And the type for this interface is going to be actions.setSelectedMovie uh, ID. And the payload is going to be a number, or it might be null if we are setting it, if we are setting it um, back to the default value. And this needs a name, obviously. So this is going to be our set selected movie ID action. And then we're going to have our actual action type, which is the union of all the types. So export type action type equals set selected movie ID action. And as our only action type right now, but we will have more in the future. So there we go. There are our action types. So let's go over to our reducer function and let's see what we can do with that. So we're going to switch on action.type and the action type is going to have a case statement and the case might be actions.setSelectedMovieID. If we are setting the selected movie ID, then we want to do that. So we will uh, return the new state. So to do that, we need to return the old state which is the spread operator of the state. And we want to make the new state, which is selected movie ID. And that is going to be the action dot, oops, payload. Can we return that? Oh, we need to return that. Okay. So, yeah. This is what we do to update our state. We need to import action type as well. All right. And we also need a default case statement. And if we have the default case statement, what if we turn the state we already have? So if we got an unknown action, which won't be possible with TypeScript, but you know, it's good to have it in there anyway, we will return the existing state. 
So there we go. There is our first action, and we have our state. We have our initial state. Yeah, I think we're uh, doing good. All right, so now it's time to put this reducer and our state together in the application and provide that to all of our components. So first thing I want to do is I want to make a new file, um, default.ts. Maybe just maybe I'll call it initial state.ts. So I'm going to pull this out of here, put that into initial state, and we're going to export that initial state, and we're going to import the state type. There we go. And we'll save this file as well. So let's go back into our app. So here's where we're going to have our reducer. So here's where we use our use reducer hook. So const uh, state dispatch equals use reducer and we're going to have the reducer function and our initial state okay so our reducer is going to come from state reducer that's our default thing in there and we need to import use reducer as well that was not right uh, this one there we go Okay, so we have our state and we have our dispatch. We have our reducer hook. This is in our global application, so we need to provide that to everything. So we also need to use the context to provide that to our application. And to do that, we simply do uh, state context dot provider value equals, and we have to put it in you know the escape to JavaScript or whatever and needs to be an object. We're providing an object. And that object is going to be the state and the dispatch. All right. Okay. So dispatch, not dispatch. Let's see here. State type not assignable undefined. That is true. Um, Let's go back into our not this is our state context, and this needs to be given a type now. So it either needs to be the state type or it needs to be undefined. We need to import the state type, and I think that should fix that problem. And we need to add the reducer type as well. Reducer is no longer undefined. It is now an action type, I believe. Yeah, this should be an action type. And if we import that, that should fix that, and that should fix that. Okay, there we go. There is our application state, and we should now be able to use that anywhere in our application. So why don't we take a look at that real quick. Let's go into, what do we need? Let's go into our main page. What is our main page? Where is our main page? It's somewhere in there. There it is. Um, we're going to use, I mean, I don't really want it here, but for demonstration purposes, let's just use it here. So I want to say use con, uh, con uh, state dispatch. I want to use the state right now. So const state equals use context. And I believe that is everything. No, no, we need the app. We need the app state. We need the global state context. So it needs to be state context. Okay, that should be good. So what I want to do is um, just, let's just log this for now. Console.log state. So let's see what that looks like. So I go over to our application and I clear this up, make it a little bigger. And then let's just, where's the console? Let's just do this. I hit restart. There we go. And yeah, we've got our actors array, we've got our categories array, we've got our movie name, our movies, etc., etc. So that is the beginning of making our state. We've got our state in there, but it doesn't do anything yet. It just kind of hangs out and exists, which, you know, that's a good start, but it'd be nice if it did something. Why don't we make the movie state reflect the actual movie list? 
So let's create our fake data inside our state. So we'll do that by redefining our initial state. So if we go in here, initial state, let's define our list of movies. It's supposed to be a list of strings. Let's just define them. Let's say Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, and we'll say, what's another movie? Uh, Dark Knight Rises, um, Avatar, Catwoman, I don't know why, Wizard of Oz. Okay, there we go. There's our default state. And let's go into, not our main pad, I don't want to put it here anymore. So let's just delete this real quick. Let's get rid of this and this. And let's go into our movie list component. And let's put them here. So const state equals use context. And I want the state context. Now I want to define the movies based on this. So rather than just these generic little options here, I want to actually display the state. So let's use um, the map function. Uh, we have state dot move. I can't I type movies. There we go. State dot movies dot map. We need a callback function. Uh, it's going to take a movie. And I think I need the index because I need to use the ID. And we are going to return an option key equals index. And we're going to say uh, movie. And I believe that should work. So if I delete all of these things, does that work? Sadly, no. I think I shouldn't have used these um, braces. If I don't, it should be an implicit return. Does that work? What about this? There we go. There are our new movies. So you can see we now are reflecting the actual state of the application. Of course, there's a lot more work to be done on that, but this is the basics. We define our state, create dummy state, and then eventually we'll hook into our backend database and actually get the data from there and start reflecting our actual application. But that is the basics for now. So, hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Hope you have learned something about the use context and use reducer hooks. Maybe they'll be useful in, um, you know, your future stuff because... Uh, you know, it's not always necessary to have uh, Redux or some other state management library, but um, we will use it here eventually. We'll see some of the downsides of what I'm going to do a little bit later on in the series. But for now, it's a good starting point. I did want to show you the use context use reducer hooks anyway. So it's good to illustrate the concept, even if we're not going to eventually end up using that, because I want to show you why we're going to change track later on. So, uh, if you like the episode, please give it a like. Uh, hit that subscribe button too. It helps the channel out. And I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.